Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us for our second webinar. Last week's session was intended to serve as an overview of available products within Panther and Tiger and the specifications of the individual items. Today's webinar caters specifically to the lifting and crane industry, reiterating some of the features and benefits and the expanded capabilities of our systems for your crane control. This session is again interactive, giving you the opportunity to ask questions and add comments using the live messenger feature that will be monitored during our presentation. The webinar should take approximately 20 minutes and is followed by a question and answer session. Present today are Juan Diaz, Fred Might, and myself, Andreas. For those of you who missed the last webinar, Teleradio was founded in 1955 in Sweden. Teleradio America is located in North Miami, Florida, from where we handle sales, support, application-specific engineering, and the shipping of all items out of our fully stocked warehouse to North, Central, and South America and the Caribbean. We currently have 19 subsidiaries in addition to many more authorized dealers and partners worldwide, allowing us to support our products globally. So let us take a look at what our standard off-the-shelf systems using the integrated operating modes but also modified versions with custom software are capable of and what sets Panther and Tiger apart. Both systems comply with stringent European safety standards. The PNT19-2 transmitters and all PNR15 Panther receivers are Category 3 Performance Level D certified. Exceeding the minimum CAT3 PLC certification, which is the current mandatory standard for lifting applications in Europe. All Tiger transmitters and receivers have an even higher safety level as they are SIL 3 Performance Level E certified. In order to reach the before mentioned safety levels, receivers have to be redundant and feature a minimum of two microprocessors and two safety relays among many other perimeters. Panther systems are currently limited to simplex communication from transmitter to receiver, whereas Panther Generation 2 is to include full duplex capabilities in the future. Tiger, on the other hand, is a full duplex system, capable of transmitting from transmitter to receiver, but also receiver to transmitter, enabling direct feedback from crane load cells, limit switches, sensors, PLCs, and many other, turning transmitter and receiver into transceivers. Panther operates in the license-free FCC and IC approved 2.4 GHz frequency, allowing for interference-free operation of hundreds of systems in the same area at the same time without having to set specific channels or keep complicated frequency logs. This is achieved by providing 16 channels, each allowing simultaneous operation of up to 12 systems within a single frequency channel. Tiger operates in the license-free FCC and IC approved 915 MHz band with frequency hopping technology using the 903 to 926 MHz frequency spectrum, changing frequencies in a predetermined pattern every 40 milliseconds to avoid interference to other systems or equipment that transmits in similar frequencies. Both Panther and Tiger systems ensure that the receiver's safety relays drop whenever the receiver loses sight of the transmitter's stay alive pulses that are sent in bursts every 50 milliseconds. Hardware for some of our Panther and Tiger transmitters are identical. One significant, significant difference besides communication protocol and frequencies, however, is the amount of usable LEDs arranged next to each push button. Panther will allow us to use four of the available LEDs 
whereas we can use all LEDs that are available on the Tiger transmitters. You will get examples and learn as to how the LEDs are used during our presentation. Our standard PN-T19-2 Panther transmitter, for example, features four LEDs in addition to the battery indicator LED that are used during programming procedures, but most importantly as indicators to the operator that cranes are in tandem mode, dual hoists are selected, or any other setting that may be applied. Transmitter LED settings are called load selects. They must be set according to a given receiver operating mode. Let's talk briefly about operating modes. Each Panther and Tiger receiver feature different pre-loaded operating modes, illustrated in their manuals. You may use the drawings of each operating mode to determine whether the supplied mode accommodates your application or if you require additional programming or software. Three motion to speed cranes may be operated with any of our off-the-shelf Panther or Tiger systems in the default operating mode they are delivered in. Systems to accommodate cranes with dual hoist trolleys, however, do require a change of the operating mode, which translates into a different push button to relay map. Referenced in this slide is our 19 relay Panther receiver and PN-T19-2 transmitter. The maps shown indicate what push button activates what relay in what operating mode. Standard delivery mode 7 accommodates a 3 motion 2 speed crane with single hoist, whereas each set of two push buttons is linked to two directional and one common high speed relay, with the exception of buttons 7 and 8 that are used for horn and auxiliary functions. Changing from mode 7 to mode 8, for example, provides two directional and two separate high-speed relays for the hoist function to adapt to certain cranes. Changing the receiver to mode 9 will provide two latching relays, number 11 and 10, that are linked to transmitter push button 8, allowing the control of a crane with two hoist trolleys whereas each hoist and each trolley share one set of directional and common high-speed relays. Now that we addressed the basics of our systems, we would like to give you examples of applications using systems with standard operating modes and applications that require custom programming or software. Shown here is the progression of a standard 3 motion 2 speed single hoist crane controlled with different Panther and Tiger systems based on customer specific requirements. In this case, crane is controlled with a standard Panther system using an 8 button transmitter. The same crane here is equipped with a load cell and may now be controlled with our 10 button Tiger transmitter with screen for direct feedback from the load cell. The same crane with load cell controlled with our proportional Tiger transmitter with screen for feedback, driving the VFDs of the crane with a 0 to 10 volt output signal. If preferred, you may opt to use our Tiger belly box system that also allows for feedback from the load cell on its built-in screen. Using our Tiger system with your load cell not only allows for feedback, we can fully customize the receiver to set load limits, disable motions, restrict movements, or limit them to single speed, combine weight feedback when using two hoists, add slag rope detection, and alarms when the crane is overloaded, and so much more. Another option that becomes more and more popular is the use of two receivers eliminating the festoon from hoist trolley to the bridge. Controlled with a single transmitter accommodating a three motion to speed crane, whereas one receiver is used for the hoist trolley and a second receiver for the bridge. We can also accommodate a dual hoist crane, providing a total of three receivers, one for the bridge, a second for hoist trolley one, and the third for hoist trolley 2, all controlled with a single transmitter. 
cranes with more than two speeds, like three, four and five speeds, typically call for a belly box type transmitter with joysticks, available in our Tiger product line. A more cost effective option for three speed crane control is also available with a custom program Panther system. The transmitter features two step push buttons, whereas the third speed pulls in when the second step has been pressed for two or three seconds. The third speed is enabled or disabled by pressing button 8, in turn lighting up LED number 1, letting the operator know that third speed is enabled. When the third speed is disabled, the crane will be limited to travel in first and second speed. In order to flip loads using two hoists, you may opt to use a standard 12 button panther transmitter shown on the left that uses two buttons for each hoist, each trolley and bridge. Or alternatively, a custom programmed panther or tiger as shown on the right using the same transmitter providing hoist select buttons and inversion feature, allowing the hoist to automatically travel in opposite directions when the systems are in tandem mode and the inversion mode is selected. Custom programming allows us to use one panther transmitter to control up to four hoist trolleys, individually and in tandem choosing any combination. The software has the hoist trolley toggle buttons 5, 6, 7 and 8 energize the safety relay in the chosen receiver, whereas the transmitter LEDs indicate the selected hoist trolley combination. We are also able to control two bridges, each with two hoist trolleys using Panther or Tiger. As previously mentioned though, Panther is limited to the use of four LEDs. With that only able to indicate selection of bridge A or B, LED, LEDs next to the button slide up, whereas button 12 and the LEDs next to it indicate the hoist trolley selection that applies to both cranes based on its selection. Tiger on the other hand allows us to provide button 12 to toggle between bridge A, B and A plus B indicated using the LEDs next to buttons 11 and 12 whereas buttons 7 and 8 and the LEDs next to it allow the selection of hoist trolley 1, 2 and 1 plus 2 on bridge A and buttons 9 and 10 and the LEDs next to it the selection of hoist trolley 1, 2 and 1 plus 2 on bridge B, as such allowing any possible hoist trolley and crane combinations. Receiver-to-receiver -receiver communication for tandem crane applications is a must in Europe. Tiger CTC, which is currently only available as add-on for Tiger, in the future however also in our second generation Panther, provides communication between two or more receivers using Modbus protocol. Designed to monitor synchronized commands, making sure that if one of the receiver drops out, reaches the end of a runway or a limit switch stops a motion that all receivers as part of the tandem lift follow immediate suit. Vacuum and magnet lifter control requires dedicated buttons that are to be pressed to activate the magnet or vacuum function, in turn energizing corresponding relays and light up an LED, letting the operator know that the load may be lifted. Once the move of the load is complete and ready to be dropped, operator must press two separate buttons with integrated time delay of two seconds before the relay holds the mag before the relay that holds the magnet or lifter may open, turning off the LED and with that drop the load. In addition to that, the receiver is custom programmed to keep the relay that corresponds to the magnet or vacuum energized even if the e-stop is pressed, dropping all other relays. Shown here is a crane with three hoist trolleys, controlled with a belly box type transmitter, modified to replace standard XY joysticks with stepless paddles for precise proportional crane control, manipulating the VFDs with 0 to 10 volt outputs. For added safety, we modified the transmitter to include a key switch, preventing unauthorized use. 
Access control may also be provided for all Panther and Tiger transmitters via PIN code that must be entered before a transmitter can be activated. Another safety feature we recently added to a Tiger transmitter for an overhead crane was a timer button and an LED next to the button indicating that a timer has started. Customer reported that crane operators leaning on their transmitters accidentally pressed buttons inadvertently moving the cranes. A push to operate button was not an option as the operator required one hand to guide the load and the second, uh, second hand on the transmitter. With that we created a software that would require button 12 to be pressed, in turn starting a 3 second timer and LED feedback. If the operator neglected to press a button or function button within 3 seconds, the LED would turn off, disabling all function buttons until the timer is pressed yet again, restarting it. Now that we addressed some of the more complex applications, we also wanted to mention our Panther hoist and monorail kits. Our hoists, hoist kits are available with three and six button transmitters, accommodating single and two speed hoists. The monorail kit is limited to the control of single speed hoist trolleys. Two speed hoist trolleys should be controlled using our standard PNS-R1522-T1922 Panther systems. Custom foils to give our transmitters your identity or customer specific function descriptions are available for any transmitter. Summarizing Panther and Tiger, we have the ability to modify hardware, for example, adding toggle switches, potentiometers, key locks, 16 or 24 pin connectors to provide true plug and play solutions. Software enables us to finesse your crane control by providing programmable logic that may otherwise only be achieved by adding costly hardware. A reiteration of features some already mentioned previously are achievable with custom software not limited to interlocks and groups allowing the use of only one motion at a time, push to operate buttons that are used as deadman switch, push button delay to prevent premature dropping of relays, time delay between buttons and or steps, automatic shutoff time adjustment, timed relays as example, energize the relay that corresponds to the horn for X amount of seconds before the main line may kick in. We can provide latching relays used for anti-collision systems when cranes are in tandem mode and so much more. Crane control may also be available via bus systems, not common for cranes in the US, with a very few exceptions. We do however see it become more relevant in Europe. This concludes our lifting and crane overview. We hope we have inspired you with these examples given. Please be reminded that we can provide wireless systems for standard and complex crane applications and encourage you to contact us with scopes of your projects, allowing us to propose a feasible solution no matter how small or elaborate it may be. We thank you yet again for joining us and hope you stick around for our question and answer session moderated by my colleague Fred. Hope you guys enjoy our webinar. So let's move on with our Q&A session. As uh, stated in the beginning of our presentation, you have the ability to write and address questions using the messenger on the right hand side of your screen. You may, however, have to log into your Gmail account to be able to type. Um, that said, I will read your questions out loud and one of my colleagues here will address it to the best of our knowledge. If we can answer your question on the spot, we kindly ask you to contact us via phone or email to discuss your question in great detail. Our information is on the, on the bottom here, our phone number, email address as well. Um, so with that said, um, again, you guys can use uh, our messenger on the side. 
And just so you guys also know, um, all of our menus are available online, downloadable in PDF format. Uh, it will require a password uh, in order for it to download, but you can send us an email and we'll definitely provide a password for you. Also, if you have uh, questions to an application that was part of the presentation, please let us know and we will explain it further. And uh, also, if you have a uh, feedback as to the presentation or if you're interested in a specific subject that was not mentioned here, um, please, um, please also let us know so we can consider it for future webinars. No questions. So did we? Uh, I guess we did our job then. Uh, anybody? Um, there is actually one question. Um, it says, "Hi, could you explain how to exchange a broken transmitter uh, from our Panther product line?" Yeah. Uh, so um, each Panther transmitter has a unique ID code, which is always documented in the back of the transmitter. The PN-T19-2, for example, has it right above the battery compartment. It's a six digit code. And um, all you have to do is take a new transmitter and uh, enter the menu mode by using the transmitter push buttons. There's a prompt that's available in the menu, uh, the, the how to access the um, replace ID code, and uh, not the replace ID, I'm sorry. The procedure as to how to replace a transmitter from the ground, ground up requires the uh, access to the manual mode, which is done by push buttons. At that point, you're prompted to enter the ID code of the transmitter that is to be replaced, i.e. the broken or defective transmitter. You enter the ID code, and once you have done so, the new transmitter sends a signal to the receiver, letting the receiver know that the new transmitter is to replace the defective unit and automatically erasing that unit out of its uh, memory. Uh, so it's a pretty print, uh, simple process. And as Fred stated earlier, um, we have uh, instructions available in our manuals, but also we have videos. Uh, you could email us. We actually have the uh, precise video step-by-step -step instructions. It's like a 15 second video that actually walks you through it. So if your customer ever requires these instructions, rather than uh, going through the manual, he can uh, watch that little YouTube video and uh, basically sees exactly what he needs to do. So it's a very simple process. Yeah, if I, if I could add to that too, uh um, maybe we covered it before, but uh, just to let you know that also that you do not need one transmitter for every crane or any system that you have, a spare transmitter. One spare transmitter is universal and could be used uh, for any of the Panther units. Okay? Correct. That's one of, one of the advantages of using a, a Panther uh, radio control. Correct. Um, we have another question um, from Nicholas. He says, um, concerning keep it a function relay latch when the emergency stop is pushed for a vacuum or magnet function. I know it's possible with specific program, but what happens if there is an electric power failure? Right, typically, when uh, we recommend that the receivers that are... Uh, I'm sorry. No, no, you're oh. Sorry. Um, Yes, Nicholas, so typically when, when that happens, we recommend that the receiver is powered by some kind of power supply, uh, backup power supply. So if the power, the mains power goes out, you have that battery backup power, which can, will continue to power the receiver. Uh, also, there are some systems which also require that, uh, that the vacuum, uh, the, the PLC or or um, any of the crane electronics be also backed up by a battery. So again, if the power fails, you have your own power source from batteries. Hope that answers that, that question. 
Correct. I just wanted to rephrase and let you guys know that uh, we do have a YouTube channel and instructions on how to replace, how to register or erase a transmitter are available in our YouTube channel. So you guys can um, take a look at that. There's uh, videos of our Panther and Tiger product line as well in there. Again, if you have any questions or maybe you have a specific application that you may are or considering adding a radio remote control, please um, send us an email or give us a call here at the office and we will um, answer that, that email in a timely manner. Um, also, we have a question from uh, Brett and he says, will you please explain more about the option to control the hoist and trolley without Feston on the bridge? Want me to take it? No. Uh, Brett, uh, so it's very simple. Basically, we offer systems for standard three motion signal hoist cranes where we provide one receiver that is mounted on your hoist and trolley and uh, controlled by buttons one, two, three, and four hoist trolley, uh, hoist and trolley. Whereas the second receiver, which is mounted to the uh, to for the bridge control, um, is linked directly to buttons five and six. So whenever the transmitter is started, you power both receivers, and uh, the push buttons basically are linked specifically to the receivers that was that enabled. Uh, the control of both receivers um, uh, to control one uh, three motion two speed single hoist crane. The same option is available. I know you guys also do uh, dual hoist cranes at times. We have the same option as stated in our presentation. Uh, we can make the same system available with three receivers where you have one receiver on the bridge, a second receiver on hoist trolley one, and a third receiver on hoist trolley two, again, all wireless. The only thing you have to do, obviously, you have to run a power strip out to the uh, bridge control, uh, to the bridge receiver. That's the only thing that you require. Obviously, you have to run power out to it, but that's about all you need. Other than that, you eliminate the festoon. Uh, it's a great advantage for retrofitting cranes, actually, if you, uh, you know, wanna, wanna add a remote control to it, so it makes it really easy to adapt remote controls to a crane that uh, doesn't have it yet. So just food for thought. Yeah, I think even if you have a uh, crane which has Festoon at the moment, you could just purchase one more receiver, add it to, to the hoist and trolley, uh, and you don't need to send anything back to us. It's just adding an additional receiver to this. Well, also, um, there's so many things that we didn't add uh, in our presentation. Again, we have limited time, obviously. Uh, we feel like a 20-minute presentation should suffice just to give you, to inspire you, to give you some ideas as to what we can do. Um, just food for thought as well. You can control actually up to 15 cranes with a single transmitter or 15 hoists. So there's so many things what, that we haven't mentioned. So again, just because they're not mentioned in our presentation, don't ever think we can't do it just because it wasn't uh, specifically uh, outlined there. So whenever you can think of, of an application that you wish to remote control, just give us a call or send us an email, express what you're trying to do, and we will make sure that we provide a system solution that hopefully accommodates uh, your requirements. Again, if you guys have any questions, um, you guys can send it using the messenger next to on your on your right hand side, or again, you guys can simply send us an, an email, and you know we'll be try to contact you as soon as as soon as possible. We'll probably stay uh, another minute to see if you guys have any any more questions. Also, I'm um, sorry if I may uh, chime in here one more time. 
I think it's very important to get your feedback on, on anything that interests you. So we would definitely uh, appreciate if you could send us an email or, or send us a note and tell us, okay, uh, you know, we would like to see something uh, that talks more about joystick control or whatever. So we can potentially compile information that you would like to see and maybe incorporate that into a future webinar. So let us know what you're interested in and we'll, we'll come up with something. We have uh, another question and it actually, if we can explain the operation with two transmitters and one receiver. Okay. Or multiple, if when, you know, how many transmitters can you have on a, on a receiver? You know, how is that operation? Sure. Uh, well, uh, for, for safety and all our lifting applications or material handling applications, we only allow one transmitter to have control of the receiver at any given time. That doesn't mean that only one transmitter is saved into the receiver. You could save up to 15 in, in Tiger, for example, or eight in Panther. Uh, but there's a safe procedure to go from that first transmitter to a second, third, and so on transmitter that's saved already in in the receiver's uh, memory so uh, only transmitters that are saved could take control of the receiver but they're done only one at a time in a safe manner so you do kind of like a handshake you uh, log off one uh, transmitter and you allow a second transmitter or any other transmitter that is registered to log on i don't know if that answers that question and uh, if I may add to that as well, it's not that we can't have multiple transmitters talk to the receiver at any given time. It is easy for us to allow multiple transmitters to talk to a receiver or have a, uh, a first come first serve. But as one stated, due to safety, we don't allow it. Uh, especially talking about cranes, imagine uh, um, a crane operator is on the floor operating the crane. He puts his transmitter down, turns it off momentarily because he wants to pick something up. In the meantime, somebody else uh, picks up the spare transmitter, turns it on and starts operating the crane without uh, uh, the operator knowing it. It hits him over the head with a hook. It could uh, cause potential disaster. So for that reason, we are very particular and say you have to log out a uh, primary transmitter before a secondary may take control. So it's purely based on safety, not on ability. Yeah. All right. All right, once again, our information is, is below. If you, are, if you guys want to contact us, um, as there seem to be no more questions, then we will close today's session. Thank you yet again for your interest and attendance. We appreciate your business. Thank, Thank you. you.